I'll tell you when. Okay. okay. We are now live and I'm so happy to be here with Sarah Walsh, one of my incredible artists. I'm so glad that we can be together today because, you know, uh, it's a, a, a challenging time. It's an important time. It's a time this, this, that we need to go through. Um, and between Black Lives Matter and the pandemic, uh, it puts the important stuff in perspective. And Sarah, you did a beautiful post today on Instagram. I want to tell the audience this. Um, Sarah, your life hasn't exactly been a walk in the park, to put it mildly. <laughs> How, however, no. your art is so joyful, so happy, and I know that feels funny in this time, but it's also a part of who you are. How do you feel about that? You want to share? Um, well, I, I just want to say, first off, that <laughs> my grandmother was an amazing woman, and I think whenever I just started feeling down, she would just remind me there was always someone worse off. Mm. And I have it grilled into my head. Um, just like right now, to your point, you know, those sort of daily grind things that, um, you know, kind of annoy us and aggravate us and frustrate us and then kind of get us off our track, it's, it doesn't matter. It's nothing right now right. compared to people being afraid mm -hmm. to live. Right. So but people being afraid to live. To your point, it does, you know, everything going on right now puts mm -hmm. things into perspective 100%. Yeah. And I, and I, my family and I have been taking, taking it all to heart and having some really hard conversations. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a time to be uncomfortable, and mm -hmm. so but that means it's a time to evolve, right? You know, so right. Um, um, I want to tell our audience that um, I'm going to put the poll up, so feel free to fill that out. Um, a reminder to put your questions in the Q and A not the chat, just because we won't see them there, but we will see them in the Q&A. We'll try to address a few questions that you may have for Sarah. Uh, we have a giveaway at the end. This is by Sarah, this gorgeous zipper <laughs> pouch by Blue Q. I'm also showing you my nails. Oh, I them. love them. Aren't they great? <laughs> um, so this will be a, a, like a, a, one of our little contest giveaways. And so stay for that at the end. And I want to remind you, uh, uh, viewers, next week we have Anka Rega. I will be interviewing my artist, Anka Rega. Oh so those of you just joining us, Sarah Walsh is one of my incredible artists. I love her so much. And now I'd like to read to you her uh, bio. Sarah Walsh is a multidisciplinary artist with a body of work spanning 20 years, ranging from illustration painting, pattern design, hand lettering, product creation, character design, and more. I will tell you, she's flat out busy almost all the time for years. I will say that as her agent. Mm. She received her BFA in graphic design in upstate New York. Where was that, Sarah? Um, well, I grew up in Albany. Uh, I was born in Connecticut, but I grew up in Albany. And there was a, a little college called St. Rose. It used to be like an all-woman's nun school, and then they wow. transformed it. And a lot of the alum are, were design majors from Tyler. And so, which is like a very uh, renowned, you know, renowned I'm design. Still, Philly, yeah. And they were, they were incredible, incredible women. I just, I have such a soft spot in my heart for them. They, they just, they were so nurturing and the classes yeah. weren't, we had about 20 people in our graduating class, but those women put their heart and soul into the students and they really supported me and, um, saw that I had some odds against me being a single parent and being, you know, in my early 20s. And I think they, you know, wanted me to succeed and they saw that I was not messing around and they it just, it was a great, it like, 
it was like a big piece of my puzzle. I think it gave me the courage to keep, you know, moving forward. Um, mm -hmm. And you have to have that. You cannot, I don't think you can do it. You just can't do it alone. You have to have people rooting for you that will yes. help you out in your, in your journey. But totally. yeah, so I went to school there and actually no one's ever heard of the school, but Jimmy Fallon, um, he went there, but he didn't graduate. And then I think they made a big joke out of it. And a couple years ago, I think he like went back and finished or he just spoke at the, um, the graduating class of whatever. I don't remember. But That's so great. I want to read more of your bio because it's wonderful. And I want to say, I'm so glad to see um, Vanessa Brantley Newton. Hello. I'm so glad you're here. Vanessa. Please follow her. Please follow her. Wonderful. Vanessa's stuff. amazing. Amazing. I love her posts. Um, okay. So let's see. Her love, this is back to Sarah Walsh's bio, her love of gouache paint and her passion for mid-century design vintage children's books, fashion, all things magical, folk art, animals, nature, and old school signage would become a f the foundation for her work. All early on in her career, she worked at Hallmark Cards as an in-house designer and illustrator. And, and that's why, and that's when, when I took you on, that's where you were. Mm -hmm. um, right. And you know what, it's Margot Tanto. If you were here, I called up, Margot, what do you think of Sarah Wall? She worked with her. She's She's amazing. She's a beautiful oh, human being. And of course, her work is great. After several years, Sarah decided to branch off on her own, uh, oh, to, to branch and then signed with Lila Rogers Studio. Since then, she's collaborated with clients like Washington Post, The Guardian UK, Penguin Random House, Simon & Schuster, and Blue Q, to name a very few. Again, she because her work is so incredible and so authentic and so full of life. She is incredibly busy. She also runs and makes artwork for Tiger Sheep Friends. By the way, that's her Etsy site, Tiger Sheep. Is that it? Tiger mm -hmm. Sheep Friends. So go there, check it out and check out her wonderful stuff. A small batch product based brand founded by her and her husband, Colin Walsh a fellow illustrator. She currently lives in Kansas City with Colin, their son, a pup, and a chubby cat. She works from her sunny and plant-filled studio in the historic River Market area. And does your daughter live with you now? No, she's in Chicago. Yeah, she went to school there. Um, actually, when I was pregnant, I was due in two weeks and we had to drive her to Chicago and move her into her to start college. <laughs> it was like one kid leaving and another kid coming in. <laughs> you had like a week of empty nest. Yeah, a that's second, it. A smidgen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, we are also going to see an incredible portfolio of Sarah's work that is going to knock your socks off. But first, I'm gonna, we're just going to have a little chit chat. Um, and let me get that Q and A panel up. Um, well, can I thank you for that introduction? Because that's just not a normal thing to have someone like turn on the hardcore gushing. So thank you. That's you're I'm most like, welcome. I'm hot did, now. did you like how I would read it and interject? Yeah. Like, usually they just read. You no, know? you. But I'm like I have to chime in. Yeah. Okay, let me show you this Thank by you. Sarah. She's going to show you some product. This is a gorgeous puzzle um, who did, by Mud Puppy. And look at this. She just, Sarah just did this puzzle. You just zoomed in on where my family is. My daughter's holding the spotted pup. And then my husband is where the, the bearded guy and the little boy is Finley. So there's Michelle. Finley. Oh, there. That's yeah. your daughter with the blue headband? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then yeah. my and then my my beardy guy and your little boy yeah yeah that's so great that's so cool you put your family in when um, i was uh, working on this project lilla i think i forgot to tell you this but um i just thought well i have to make up all these fake people um and i told the designer her name is failing me right now and i'm sorry um that's okay but she was really great. And I said, Hey, can you send me some pictures of the people that you work with? Like part of mud puppy and oh. we can them in there. So there's some peeps that work at Gallison slash mud puppy. <laughs> like the, the guy with the coffee and straw and the hat. Yes. 
You can just stare at this thing forever. Oh, and thank such you. Goodness. you did, I, this is one of my most favorite projects, and believe me. Thank I, you so much. I, lo I just love that. I love everything about it. I love all our welcome here. I love the, the diversity of people. It's all beautiful. It's all good. Um, yeah. Well, that's Greg important. Vineyard says he loves that your family is in there. That's The puzzle is sold out, says Patty. Yeah. Oh, um, everywhere. Oh, well, well, that's great. Um, that's great. Okay. So here are my questions for you. Let's see. So how do you, and I don't know, and if you can't answer this, you can't answer it. It's like an impossible question, but how do you make such beautiful, joyful work? How do you stay, keep your heart joyful? Well, it's not always easy, and especially in a time like this, I it's a challenge. I have to be honest with you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, people are in pain, and I I'm feeling I feel the hurt, and I I'm empathizing with with people that are hurting right now, and it hurts me that people mm -hmm. are hurting. Um, so I think it's kind of like. Uh, a process and some people I feel like there's better than this at, than me and I envy like they're good at this is like one of my goals is to get better at knowing what's in my toolbox to just like get me out of a funk um, but I think part of it for me is I I think part of it is like going through that process is necessary for me like not that I want to be unhappy but um, I like I have a little bit of I think I do kind of carry a little bit of melancholy with me wherever I go even though I don't seem like that kind of person it's a big part of who I am as well mm -hmm. um, because of some things that I experienced when I grew up and but there was also a lot of love in my family and a lot of humor and joy and I feel so grateful for that that I had both experiences to show me that not that anyone wants to be in pain um but i think if there's the right amount of love and kindness as well you are taught uh somewhat of a framework to cope with those painful moments and how and do you do that sarah any tips for us on you know there's such pain now and it's important pain and it's I love, honestly, my whole life, you know, years ago, years ago, this wouldn't have been news, no. what happened to George Floyd. It wouldn't even be news. I and know. now all these protests make me so happy. You know, there's so much joy here. I know. There's I so thought much about power and awareness i'm for someone my age i'm so grateful you know um my temple when i grew up uh in my 20s someone sprayed swastikas on it there were swastikas mm -hmm. and i just called my mother last night i said mom was that even in the news and she thought mm, no didn't even yeah. make our local paper or anything and we we're very it was very shame-based and and we felt we didn't even want it, you know just don't publicize it. We don't even want more people to do it. Or, you know, right. there was there were no there was nothing and yeah. nothing to heal the wound. And nothing. I think the thing or to with, outrage. Yeah, sorry. There's no, but I think to acknowledge it is part of of the healing process. And I think I was thinking about George this morning, and I this is I told you I don't want to cry, but um, I think it's like this terrible thing of I'm a big fan of Maya Angelou and I'm I'm gonna go back to that because that's not uh, although it's still painful the George Floyd situation is very fresh and I don't feel like I'm the right person to be talking about some I just don't feel comfortable about navigating through some of that right now um, but I I'm gonna hearken back to Maya Angelou when I think about terrible things that happen and then these gifts that come from them and it blows my mind because I think about what happened to her as a child 
-hmm. And the fact that she didn't speak for, I don't remember exactly the time, but it was like a year, three years, some, somewhere, just an, an ungodly amount of time. And during that time, she poured herself into poetry and fell in love with poetry. And it was like brewing and fermenting. And it was like this, there was a diamond being made inside of her heart and her mind. And then she became this incredible poet. And I think about like, would that have happened if she had had that terrible thing happen to her, you know? And I don't know. I don't know the answer, but to your point about these incredible things happening right now, it, it does give you hope. And I do feel like, you know, it'll never bring this amazing, beautiful, gentle man back. Um, from, from what I hear, he just sounded like such a love and it, it's yeah. terrible. It's terrible. But, you know, I think some are really incredible things are happening and I do I'm, too. I'm grateful for I've never been more optimistic. Isn't that interesting? I've never been more optimistic about real change and awareness that's going to happen. And I want to tell the younger people, I know it's hard, like my, my kids are in their twenties and it's just so hard, but I see it's such good change. It's such good change. But let's let's look at let's look at your Can I just say oh. one thing as oh, a call please. to this conclusion of this conversation. It's not enough to be not racist anymore. For people that are white, we have to step it up and and do and actively be anti racist, which means there's actions attached that help distinguish between the right and wrong going on right now. That's all I'll say. I'm, I'm going to get off my soapbox. So I just wanted to conclude oh, that. Was, you and know. I, I think so many of our followers, uh, 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 Vanessa Brantley Newton says, thanks, Sarah, say that. Yes, yes, it's so true. And, and so much is structural. Racism is structural. It's built into the system. It's not just being nice to all people. You know, it's way more. I mean, of course, do that always. But, and so that has to do with changing the structures in our country that keep oppression. So we're all, yes, systemic racism says Lib and Sarah Papworth says, yes, so true. So moving, ladies, says Kara Wolfsberger. Yes, that's good. Um, yeah, I hope I hope it's helpful. So I know what's going to help everybody, all the sensitive souls out there, is if we take a look at Sarah. Um, did you want to talk about the protest, or do you want to go look at your work? What do you want to do? Um, I'll, just, I'll get emotional, but I will say, if you've been thinking about going to a protest, um, I mean, there's just a lot of different things you can do, but I, in my humble opinion, I feel like, and I am not a political person, but when Trump got elected, I know it's probably not, we're not supposed to talk about politics, but um, when he got elected, politics became personal to me because as a woman, it was crossing a line. And so from then on out, it sort of made me see things differently. And again, I am not one of those people that can rattle off all these. I'm not a debater. I'm not a person who feels comfortable with a lot of political jargon. I, I feel like I'm in the dark. But I do know that I think I went to my first city council meeting the other night. Wow. Oh. And I would have, this is a blessing of the pandemic. And again, I, it's terrible how many lives have been lost, but it, it, it's never all bad and it's never all good. Mm-hmm. And out of the pandemic, the city council meeting was via Zoom and I probably wouldn't have went if it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And I, my city council lady who's in charge of our ward, she came to the door before she got elected and asked what was important to me. And I said, this was like, I don't know, like a year ago. And I said, diversity. Um, And I wish, where have you been, Jenna? Because my daughter, you know, again, nobody looked like her, you know, when we moved there. And it bothered me that I had to make a choice between a good school district, but a not diverse neighborhood, or be completely broke and try to pay for a 
private school where it would still probably be mostly white anyway. And so I told her, I said, this neighborhood needs to be more diverse. And she remembered and she won. And she called me a couple days ago and said, there's a meeting, would you come? And I was like, well, hell yeah. And she said that there's a section at the end that you can, you know, even if whatever they discussed, which was some parks and rec, mundane, crazy, boring stuff, some of it, and then some of it was fascinating. But at the end, you could say comments and I got really nervous and you have to press a button that's like, raise your hand and then you get in a, a little line and they'll call on you. And I kept pressing it and unpressing it and pressing it and unpressing it because I was nervous. But I was like, Sarah, get over yourself. This is, this, this is, this, there's a sense of urgency here. Like, this stop. stuff matters. So I left it raised and then they called on me and I just told them, you know, that, you know, I was a single parent, bought this house. There wasn't, you know, any people of color hardly. It bothered me. I know it affected my daughter. Um, it's not okay. I know that there's deep seated systematic rules set up in that neighborhood. And it's like, I, sh I my regret is not doing this sooner and not waking up sooner. And I, I'm dealing with that right now. But anyway, I spoke my piece and I heard several other people say the same thing and it made me feel better about my neighborhood. And I'm going to follow up and say, okay, great. You said, thanks for my comments. What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And then there was a march last night in a neighborhood that was very white and hundreds and hundreds of people came. There was some people of color. There was some black people. There was some incredible black speakers and it, it gave me hope. The sound guy even recorded the whole thing and, and shed a tear because he could not believe the outcome of this neighborhood and he had never seen anything like it in his life. Wow. And it's, it's, it's intense, but I just, I urge people, we have to get our hands dirty for this to right. work. And stay and, with it. And, it and you have to pace off. yourself. The speaker said, don't get exhausted, white people. <laughs> he was like, this is not the beginning and this is not the end. And so, you know, it's, it's just, it's, and it's very personal. It doesn't have to be posted on Instagram unless you need to share vital information or it's whatever is your thing, but just be sincere about it. Right. And okay, I'm going to step and down. Try. And just, we all uh, try. We all yeah, just yeah, try and make an effort. Yeah, make an effort. Um, and we're doing some initiatives here at the studio too. I'm uh, glad to hear that. Chat about it another time. Um, but right now I would love to, um, take a look. You're going to be so happy now to see, let me share my screen. Um, and let's see if I did this right. Um, Okay, are you seeing it? I are am. You, are you seeing the, oh good, okay. So look at this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And we talked, I talked to Susan McCabe um, earlier um, and you know, what you wrote on your Instagram post about like, how do you do flowers and stuff how, now and mushrooms and Susan is like, yeah, but look at that mushroom. I mean, that mushroom is, <laughs> A very, very cool interest, you know, that's not your typical mushroom. Okay, so here we are, those of you just joining us. This, I'm speaking with Sarah Walsh, one of my incredible artists. And what I'm going to do is, every time you want me to turn the page, say next, Sarah. Okay. okay. So we'll um, go. Okay. So I wanted to put some personal work in the beginning of this because uh, I think that's pretty much what drives my professional career. Mm -hmm. um, I am fortunate enough to have developed my voice enough so that it's a very concentrated version of the work I want to make and who I am. Mm -hmm. And so when clients see that, they just... If, they, if they're feeling it, they want me to do that for them, you know, a different kind of, a new version of that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that keeps my work going on the path that I feel comfortable with um, because it was coming from me from a genuine place. 
and um, I, no one else was, was influencing it. So um, yeah, I love horses. Um, the moon was done after COVID first hit and there was a lot of uh, emotions and realizations on what the next several months might look like. And I think there was a lot of anxiety and my mother-in-law and my husband and my son and I took a walk. Uh, we love to walk at night. We call them our night walks. And um, there was a pink super moon and it was just gorgeous. And it was just very calming to me. And we all had this moment looking at the moon and it was very therapeutic and cathartic. And I just kind of wanted to um, paint that. So I would remember that moment um, of, of calm and, you know, clarity. It's beautiful. We have a question. Um from and please oh. put your questions on the q a but um aaron dennis says i'd like to know how you developed your voice tips for others so you have such a strong clear recognizable style i'm sure it just happened overnight with no yeah work. just boom first thing um, you painted it, yeah i just you know boom um hi aaron i know aaron we used to work together at hallmark if it's really? the aaron dennis that i know um Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I guess, well, the it first says, thing- Yes, I'll, it's me. Yay! Um, That's cool, small world. It took forever. It took a long time to mm -hmm. develop. I mean, I think you have to make a lot of art and you have to make, you have to be willing to make a lot of bad art, um, but you also have to uh, dig deep and kind of know what what you love, what brings you joy, what you're interested in, to be curious and be a collector in your mind of all those things. And um, also who inspires you. I think that was a big part of, of my growth was um, when I was at Hallmark, uh, they hired me as a hybrid designer and illustrator because I had a lot of illustration in my portfolio, but I did not get a degree in illustration that said, I think graphic design really informed my work. Uh, I think I leaned toward like more graphic style and I, the library at Hallmark um, was, is incredible. And they had all these mid-century um, ad books. Like it was like an ad annual, of, like all the illustrated ads of each year from like the fifties and the sixties. And um, I also discovered Mary Blair um, when I first started there. It was like 2002 or something like that. And so it just, it was like this epiphany when I saw that because it was kind of marrying the graphic design that I had learned with illustration, which I had always done as a kid, but it was like this new elevated version and I could not get enough. And so that was a big, part of it and then so you you have to um and you have to be patient like I think that there's little pieces of the puzzle that make up who you are as an artist so I think it's really important to have as many different new experiences as possible and get exposed to things yes um it's it's a stew pot and it has to have you know good ingredients like you can't expect your style to evolve in a, in a vacuum because you're afraid to copy someone. Mm -hmm. Yes, you need to be respectful. And yes, you cannot copy someone and post it on Instagram and say it's yours. Mm -hmm. But I think you have to be okay with spending time with other people's artwork. You become a fan, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that, if that answers your question completely, but I don't want to just go on and on about it because I could. Okay, well, let's look at the next one. How about that? See some more um, gorgeousness. First of all, I just love your colors. I love the freedom in your paint and drawing. And that comes from just confidence, which comes from having made lots and lots of pieces. Yeah. So, sure. um, and, and, and what you choose, what you curate, what you edit, a freaking unicorn, an adorable unicorn on a blue yeah. sofa. I mean, that's a choice. That's a decision. The artwork on the wall, the kind of chair and how you look at that yellow chair. It's a shape with one brushstroke line to delineate the seat part. Brilliant. It's beautiful. Thanks, Lola. That's what I have yeah. to say. This piece 
can is sums up my work a lot in the sense that I think ever since I was a kid, like I loved that uh, the movie Never Ending Story because mm -hmm. I think I kept I just love the idea that you can be in reality and things aren't so great, um, like sometimes, and you can lift a veil and be in this completely fantasy world, like the child in the movie, he finds this book, he's getting beat up by bullies, it's thundering and raining, he escapes to the attic of the school and just discovers this book, and then he is transported. I'm getting chills, I'm such a nerd, but he just, <laughs> It's like another world, um, but he was in this regular world. And so it's that dichotomy of the in-between that I am, I am obsessed. And I, I, I'll, I don't think I'll ever get sick of that because there's always gonna be crappy things in the world and there's always gonna be good, but there's gonna be a need for escape. And that is definitely a big thing that drives my work. Well, so. I mean, what I love about that we're in the, the visual world, the creative world, the art world is, is all the beauty that my artists and all the artists are putting out there. It uplifts. There is a reason why even the caved people made drawings on the walls, you know, and yeah, um, it elevates it. So let's go to the next one. Love this personal work that was turned into an Etsy print. Um, someone asks, Lib asks, what type of medium do you use? What type of paint is that gouache? That is acrylic. Well, I think they're moving toward, I, I love Hal, Halbein, Halbein, I don't know how to say it, but mm -hmm. it's a great brand. It's H-O-L-B-I-N, and I love the uh, acrylic gouache that they make. Mm -hmm. I started out with regular water-based gouache, and then I think as I developed my style, color became a really big part of my work. And the colors, um, gouache, if, for people that use it, you know, it's, and I'm, I'm like a color, like I want a specific color. And I will spend hours mixing because I, the water-based gouache was so, it's unpredictable. Mm -hmm. um, you mix it and then it, can't remember if it dries lighter or dries darker, but it's just, it's really hard. And you know, value is really important if your paints are too close in value. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't have that pop that you want. And I, I realized with the acrylic gouache, it was a lot easier to control that. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, why wouldn't I want to do that? And then the colors straight out of the tube were like just delicious. So. And they um, dry true. That and they dry true yeah. to the color when them. they're wet and they're dry it's the same is yeah. this your daughter sort of i mean she's definitely a muse i mean i think she's amazing and she's ever since she was born she's definitely inspired me but so yeah and i love plants like i have a problem um so yeah pretty much i mean it's not her just per se but exactly yeah um it's beautiful Again, the, the pink brush line on the white pants, delineating pockets, just so elegant. Of course, I love the pattern on the bottom right on the pot. The big, bold yellow is really such a, a great choice behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could go on, but it's so great. Okay, about the next one. I'm saying next now, but yeah, I... No, no. Good. Freaking I don't... love these two women on top and the woman on the right. That that you did a while ago, didn't you? And I fell in love with it way back. Yeah. And the piece on the left is definitely my daughter. And that was when I was still at Hallmark, but I was pregnant with Finley and my daughter hadn't gone off to school yet. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Michelle, her style, she just has the coolest style and she uh, is a drag performer in Chicago. She's always loved fashion. I've always loved fashion. And part of the piece on the left, um, being a mom of a, of a black child, uh, but being white, you learn a lot. And I realized really quick that a lot of the imagery and illustration and picture books, she was not represented. And it really bothered me. And so whenever I could in my personal work, 
I wanted to be a part of reestablishing like what beauty is in our world because that's what beauty is to me is mm -hmm. this woman on the left this woman on the right there's so much so many different kinds of beauty but mm -hmm. I also the fantasy part just elevating elevating a person to uh you know just there's no limit you know right and, right so that that piece was sort of pivotal for me and like what kind of and it's part collage there's paint on the bottom where her dress is and it's kind of a hot mess of different colors like that's a cut out piece of paper mm. the main part of her dress is a, a piece of paper um the collar is a piece of paper uh i really love i haven't done it so much lately but i love like cut paper colored pencil and paint um wasn't so, that so one on it was that piece on the left um in a calendar uh yes uh no some a uh, similar, similar one to that yeah well, i love that yeah. okay let's move to the next page whoops oh man i mean where do first of all your colors unbelievable is this all gouache or is any of it digital that's actually done on procreate yeah uh, it has that crisp edge of procreate yet the background the pink has like painterly marks a little bit tiny bit just awesome so brushes some people are making some amazing brushes um and i've tried really hard to get my ipad work you know as seamless to the paint but you know it's tough but i think it's okay for artists you know to work in different mediums i think you should i think it's important to experiment like sarah joe frieden i loved I loved that interview and she talked a lot about just like experimenting with different mediums and not limiting yourself. Right. Um, I think I get the, the need to kind of keep a consistency with your voice and that is important, but she also don't, I don't think it's good. And I think I do this to myself. Like I'm like, no, I don't draw that. Blah, blah, blah. Like we all have it in our head. Right. Right. Like this is me. Do you know, Sarah, when I was an illustrator, I worked in oil paint. Some pieces were all oil, some were all pastel, some were cut paper, some were black ink line because I love a new toy. And yeah. I remember I asked, oh, who? maybe somebody knows, who was the head of illustration at SVA? Marshall Arisman, he came to my school in San Francisco when I was a student. And I said, um, and it got my, I, my nerve to go up and ask him after he lectured, you know, um, could I ask you a question? And I said, um, this is my work, all these different media. Is that okay? He said, yes, because your style goes through it all. That's awesome. Like, wow. What a moment of affirmation. Yeah. Confirmation? I don't know. what. Right it, before but. I moved to New York to try to make it as an illustrator. Validate. So, yes. I want to tell everybody, absolutely, absolutely. This is so beautiful. And I love the giraffe um, shapes. Beautiful. Thank you. And that, like, can I just gush on your behalf of like, that was before Command Z and, yeah. you know, I mean like, oh my God, I oh. do think in normal life where I'm like, I spill my coffee and I'm like, Command Z or like, I, you know, you just do stuff. Oh. And you're like, ah. I was a nervous wreck because like on a pastel, you, you can't remove that and you can go over yeah. it a little, but if it's a dark color to go over light, you could spray fixative, whatever. But then when I got my first Mac in 1984, where you couldn't do art on that yet, really, I don't think. I mean, it was like crappy little lasso. Oh, so crazy. But, oh, I think I did something with that, actually. Yeah, and I sat next to Marshall Arisman at the Kodak Center when we were uh, 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 like 30 artists and designers. Paula Cher went, uh, forgive me if Paula I said Paula Cher. Yeah, it was amazing. Gary Panter, just so many amazing artists. Seymour Quast. Um, R.O. Blackman, it was like the who's who. I was like the young kid, and um, it was uh, Paul Davis had organized this with Kodak when Kodak was a big thing. And we were invited to work with a new thing, brand new thing called Photoshop. <laughs> and they wanted to see what we would do with it. Oh my God. And they gave each oh, one of us like a monitor and like a a tech person next to us and i was next to milton 
Glazer, and he. Oh and my God! He, I was like, just gonna say I was gonna ask you if he was part of it. He was. I have some yeah. And and he was like he did not like it. I mean, he was older, and you know it was hard and all that oh stuff. Oh my God! So, so that, I I said rain. Milton. Here's what I said. I said Milton, you could be creative with the paper bag, like you can this like you can uh -huh. do this. That's and cool. I felt like who the f am I? Don't even you know. But that's so cool that you met all those guys. And I don't know if people listening like some people might know these folks, but others might not. But um, they're the, in all the history books. Milton Glazer, Lilla, the reason why our school, uh, we would get the Milton Glazer uh, internship almost every year. There was like some kind of direct contact with St. Rose and my teachers because of Tyler and Milton Glazer. Wow. And it was like this weird thing. And I think that you school was such a best kept secret because it did have some clout, but it, nobody ever heard of it. So. And I think at this thing, and this will give you hope, people. So I think there were like 20 or 30 people that they had invited, um, mostly from New York, because you had to be in New York. At that time, there was no internet, maybe. But um, he, he um, I looked around, and I think there were three women, and all the rest were men. So that Paula Cher, me, and another illustrator, I don't recall her name. So and great. and that's how things were people trust me things are you know i'm going to just say this when i first started my agency um i took my five of my students that had they were working illustrators professionals and they had been studying with me weekly for a couple of years and and then it just evolved naturally and so um, it was just women that I was representing. And I was scared because I knew that was a statement. Can you believe that? That was provocative. That was, and I did get some people call okay. up and say, why don't you represent men? And they were like indignant. Um, you know, so, and now you're probably thinking, Lilla, I don't even know what you're talking about, <laughs> you know, but so please know that so much change, people, so much good change. Let's go to the next one. That's my little story. Um, oh, this is a little, a page I put together to, um, well, I'll just say you were a pioneer in, before it was cool or trendy or anything as far as like, you know, you women, too. um, for real. Thank That's you. Incredible. Thank you. Thank you. That's always been my goal to empower women and, and men. Well, when, when I was at Hallmark, I was obsessed with Willa Rogers and all your artists. And I was, I got a blue Q bag for my lunch and I thought, wow, this is so rad. Um, Maybe I could do this someday. And then I oh. found out who the artist was. Then I found your, it was Helen Darnick. She's a goddess. And then I um, discovered you and then I was obsessed. And then it was like this little seed. You know, you say little things to yourself. Even if you don't write it down, you kind of don't even realize what you're thinking. And I don't honestly, crazy, but. Tell us about this and here's this. Don't forget, we're going to have a raffle giveaway of this pouch at the end. So stay tuned. So these oh. are all these gorgeous blue Q projects you've worked on yeah. just a small number. You've done a ton and they keep calling you because you have this coolness factor plus accessibility plus bold, gorgeous color and people look how well her pieces read small. Also, how well there's contrast, there's power, there's, there's intensity. And that's so important for the, the, the wholesaler and the retailer, because things are shown online in a sales catalog, small online. And that's part of the reason, but I just think you're in, you know, your work is so innovative. Like you did this um, on the bottom right. That piece you did a long time ago, and it's still a incredible. A long time ago. The, yeah. the head people, the head vases. Like, that was yeah. like, what? 
it was it was when I was still at Hallmark. It was like either 2000 or 2001, I think. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Bianchi. Um, I saw a nice compliment. Yeah. I don't know if I did that name right. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, again, it was like my, I was working full time as a designer and illustrator and I would work on some fun projects, but it wasn't all what I wanted. There was a lot of compromise and I didn't feel satisfied. So I would go home and just do my own stuff. And I opened a little Etsy shop. I had a little blog and it was called Unicorn Poo. And you know, it was <laughs> whatever, you know, it's like you, you try to be cool. I tried to be cool and like be quirky. Um, cause I probably wouldn't be able to get away with that when I was at Hallmark. Now I think it'd be fine, but back then it wasn't, um, I think and, things have changed, but I learned a lot there. Like I learned so much and the talent there is incredible. It and, was incredible. Uh, so yeah, it just, I worked there for 13 years and oh, I, I from know. nine to five Monday through Friday as an artist. I mean, I cannot tell you the amount of bad artwork that I made. So, you know, because I had that space and I was getting paid, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, at the time it was accepted. They didn't think it was bad, but if, when I look back on it, you know, well, some of it I like, but you know, you grow. I think that, uh, so at, around your time, I did take a number of artists uh, from Hallmark because the, 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 it was so rigorous. I think a lot of the artists just were making art every day, working hard, pushing, trying this and that, and, and I they really had a lot of chops. It was it was pretty great. Yeah. And you know, it was a place where you could get benefits and health insurance and all that. And there was a reason yeah. why people oh, went there. It's incredible. I mean, I was a single parent, you know didn't have child support, moved across the country to work at this place, didn't know a soul. And uh, I was able to eventually buy a house in a good school district by myself, making a living as an artist. I knew, I knew how rare that was and I still know how rare mm -hmm. that is. Um, and I'm, and it, it definitely built up my work ethic. I mean, you know, Lisa Congan sure. are really uh, incredible artists talk about this. You, it's, it's like anything else. It's, it's a work ethic. Mm -hmm. It's a conditioning. It's putting someone I think just posted about the 10,000 hours. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not, it can be very grueling. Uh, if you, if you look at it, afterwards standing back but at the time I was having a blast too like I wouldn't have done it if I wasn't enjoying it I think that's the biggest part is like why if it's painful and you're not enjoying it either you're not going about it the right way or maybe it's not for you because because it is hard it's hard and you take you take criticism if there's a lot of competition you have to love it and be hypnotized by it. It has, you have to love it enough for it to carry you through mm. difficult times mm. uh, creatively, because it's gonna happen. Um, there are a bunch of questions coming in, but let's move along. We'll go a little more quickly so we get to all your fabulousness. Um, I did hold this puzzle up earlier. How fantastic, now you can, see it even better and you know i love how you do diversity because first of all and i, I and i how i teach in all my classes is every child shouldn't no child should feel left out every child oh. wants to feel included and yeah. but what i love you do diversity but then you do diversity too like you know green hair and every kind of everything it's really wonderful i love it thank you thank you okay. very much they're my pleasure. Next, we'll go to the next one. Your sketchbooks are crazy. That is just like the most beautiful thing in the world. It's so beautiful. <laughs> you're too much. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I'm sweating. I, you're, it, your agent is like your mother, you know, it's like everything you do is great. 
I love everything you do. Your work is so well, like, let's say a healthy mother, you know, I don't, you know, a mother that I, I'm like your mother. Okay. But anyway, I'm so art mom. I'm your art mom. This is just incredibly beautiful, all of it. And, and the folklorique on the dresses on the right. Um, I love the body shape of the woman on the left. I remember when you did this and how she's rounded, you know, yeah. no thigh gap. Thank you. No thigh gap people. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, for some people, my husband grew up super skinny and got teased by it. He was called like skinny and all these other words. And then I was called Miss Piggy because I was really chubby growing up. And so I, I call him Kermy. And, um, but like, there's some people like they have a thigh gap and they can't help it and they get teeth, you know, <laughs> not that I have as much sympathy for skinny people getting teased. I should, but like mm -hmm. there's, I mean, you know, people right. get teased for crazy things and it's just not nice. We and, want, yeah. We want sensitivity. But this yeah. is so beautiful and look how much she gives. There's so, there's a reason why she's so busy. I'm going to go to the next one. Um, here we have live happy magazine folk art alliance personal piece for husband's birthday and then look how um this kind of thing uh landed on blue q for the oven mitt and tea towel in the bottom right um i, I don't want to run out of time Lola, but there was something with these three pa pa uh, pages that i wanted to speak to really quickly is oh, that should okay? i go back um i don't think it's necessary i just on on the three pages you noticed that there was a lot of work that was sort of similar and yeah. like it started with the the heads on the right the just the floating heads was a personal piece mm -hmm. um and then do you mind going to the next one mm -hmm. and then the one at the top was a personal piece all the rest mm -hmm. on each page is gigs is client work um well actually the one on the left with the dog and the rabbit is still a personal piece but it was a gallery show in la mm -hmm. but um i guess my point is like I, you do, when you start to develop your style and your voice, there are going to be things that you're drawn to. And I feel like they're kind of like pillars to your style. Mm -hmm. And they're like these big building blocks that you can sort of use over and over again, but differently. And, um, your iconography. like, yeah, exactly. Your visual language. And so basically when I did that piece, the one in, on the right, hand upper corner was a gift to my husband because I couldn't find anything I liked for, for the birthday and I, I'm, I'm I've gotten better but I'm I was bad at gift getting I like put too much pressure on myself so I was like oh just make him a piece of art and so anyway but you know from that one piece I have gotten four different versions of that through client work mm -hmm. and um it's a theme I like I love I I love people and I like the idea of being tender to the people that you love. And it was like a moment of tenderness that I kind of held as like a visual thing in my mind. And it just played out in different ways because I think, you know, they saw that and it resonated with them and they wanted a version of that. So I think it's just, it's really That's important to spend time and just do, do as much work as you can. And, and some of it, like if it really sticks, like build on it because somebody else is going to see that and they're going to see the same things and feel the same things that you're feeling. And they're going to want you, to, they're going to want to give you like monies for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what I love too is, you know, it's about believing in your, um, your work, believing in your voice, your brain, Absolutely. respect your brain, respect your yeah. own vision. Yes. Know that you're not exactly. alone. Yeah. It's all about that. Okay. Let us look at a few of the many, many beautiful books. I love this page, Sarah. By the way, Kim, um, we should put this on our PDF page for Sarah uh, as a downloadable. We're going to launch a PDF section on our website very soon. And we and our artists are making PDFs so art directors can download and get these wonderful portfolios. And this would be a great one. Kim is... is behind the scenes right now. Say hi, Kim. Hi, I'm here. And that's a great idea. <laughs> I made her do that. She's like, it's going to sound weird if I talk. I'm like, no, it's cool. Oh, it's the producer. Okay, so tell us about your wonderful books. 
Oh, you love um, to read books? I do. I do. It's been a dream of mine for a long time. And um, so I've been doing, thank you for the lettering compliment. Um, I love lettering too. And I think that comes from my design background. Like I love hand lettering. I love old signs. Um, and so oh, I think it's really cool that the, the companies and the publishers that I worked with they knew this and they were open to me doing the lettering for the for the book as well not just the illustration because i don't think sometimes you can separate the two mm -hmm. it's all you know tells a visual story and so um so i did the lettering on every single one of these um uh and the design for wild lives and herstory was definitely uh holly Jackman, now Phillips, uh, did the, the idea of all the animals and the people coming out of the book. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a follow-up to, we're going to have a third book in the series. It's mm -hmm. called Youthquake, and it's 50 Amazing Children. So that'll be exciting, and um, there'll be kids exploding out of the book. Um, but, by the you know, way, that her story has been translated to a jillion languages. Into a yeah, jillion. like over 16 now, I think. I, I have them all, incredible. too. It's I incredible. Think. I'm like, what? Um, great. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, I don't know what else. I feel really lucky, like True Colors. It's like an amazing song, and I got to illustrate the lyrics to it. Um, the Hats of Faith book. I am not religious per se, but I am very much about diversity and understanding the differences between us. And uh, Medea Cohen, the, the author, had never written a book before, approached me via like Etsy conversation. She had a small publisher called Shade Seven, her, her Muslim friend, Hajira. Uh, they partnered and they said they would pay me with a Kickstarter. It was, and I wasn't sure what to do and I, <laughs> Trump had just gotten elected and Medea emailed me and she referenced the nothing and the never ending story. And I was like, okay, I'm doing this project. And then Chronicle picked it up and did an imprint and it was amazing. And it's a board book. And it's a board book for really little kids to understand the different customs of, um, you know, people of different religions and the head coverings so that it's familiar and everyone feels comfortable and accepted and appreciated. Yeah, it's so wonderful. I love, I love your book so, so much. Each Thank one you. is a gem, by the way, people. I mean, the, her story, every page is fully illustrated with an incredible person in a scene with other, it's just great. I should grab it, but let's move to the next thing. Okay, abstract blobs, baby. Oh, thank you, Nita. Um, thank you, Nita. Uh, so I just, <laughs> just like wet blank. Um, so during like some, yes, blobalicious, uh, during like a lot of this book work, it can get really intense. And then sometimes I'll have like more than one book project, like two or three, which is really pushing it. Mm -hmm. And then, I have some smaller projects that will come in once in a while that I hate saying no to. And I'm learning that I, need, you know, it's really important to say no and know your capacity. Like I cannot stress enough about that. But anyway, so, but I, I miss my paints and I miss doing personal work. And so, but I had no, I had just had nothing left. And I started doing these blogs and then I got, became really good friends. Uh, she's one of my besties now. Um, her name is Kristen Schultz, but she loves blobs and abstract work. She's really talented. And we were fortunate enough to start to share a studio with each other. And I think, you know, she inspires me a lot with, cause her work is maybe less like literal than mine. And, um, so we just kind of, we like love blobs together. And it's just like this little club that we've formed just the two of us and it's just therapy. Um, and I kind of created a hashtag called confetti potato. Um, for me, you know, I'm not telling people not to use that, but it's kind of like when you come up with a, a hashtag, 
you want to be able to see just your work when you click on it, you see that specific kind of work that you're creating. That's a fun thing to do if it's something you've been thinking about, like you want to try a new, uh -huh. new medium or just like a new subject matter and you, you yeah. want to be able to see just that work alone on your Instagram feed. Like people are probably like, duh, Sarah, I, I know I've done this years before you did, but just people that <laughs> haven't okay. done that yet, it's you know, fun, cool. Sarah, how big are these two pieces on top? Um, the two on the top were in my sketchbook, and then the one on the bottom is more like an eight by ten piece, and there's cut paper in it. Because I could see the two big ones being like huge paintings, but yeah, I oh, I printed I them thirteen that. by nineteen from our printer, and it was it was I have to say it was really fun to see. Mm. Um, and Simple is hard. Like I want to add a bunch of squiggles and doodles, like the one on the bottom, and mm -hmm. um, it's some people do it so well, and you know I I kind of am like the in between of that. So okay, we're gonna move on. Um, so here's just one time for some Q and A. People have asked Q and A, and we have okay. our our raffle. These are really more blobs. more blobs. Incredible, okay. and you see your sketchbook on the right. Beautiful. I'll give everybody a moment to absorb the goodness. And I want to say that because Sarah is prolific and that allows her to grow. Let me tell you the secret to this business. You need to keep growing if you want career longevity. You need to keep challenging yourself and inspiring yourself. You need to learn how to be, to inspire yourself, how to fill up the cup. You can't just give, give, give and make art. You need to fill it back up. And it's that back and forth. You fill up a while. If it's too much looking at other things, you uh, get overwhelmed or freeze or feel whatever. So uh, it's a nice enough. balance. Like, and I recommend going to see when you could go to museums and galleries, Go see work that isn't illustration. Go look at Byzantine, get a book on Byzantine work or, you know, ancient pottery or like random crazy weird stuff. Um, okay, let's, this is a your sketchbook. I mean, seriously. Thanks. Okay, next. Oh, God. I oh, the pattern that. from the one in the back, the other one was Orla Kylie. That was not my work. So, FYI. The what? The there was a woman on the page before, yeah, the red sort of leaf pattern. That's oh not okay. Me. Or like oh, or like okay, yeah, yeah, okay. That's nice of you to to credit her. These are so beautiful. Look at the people, and each person is an individual. You feel like they're not rubber stamps. You get a nice identity. Oh, I I haven't seen this piece, have I? I love this. this. Is this is a big, these are like, I did five really big paintings because I was really burnt out from a book project. Um, Can we talk about this afterwards if it's, it's for sale? Oh, they're for sale. <laughs> is it on Etsy? No, I need to take, I need to take like good. I, okay, I can have, let's let's chit chat about that after. Uh -huh. I get dibs. <laughs> okay. This That's is just more of that reality, fantasy, duality, kind of lifting the veil uh you know it's, that toggle yeah. between that it's got world. everything it's got everything okay these space jungle Lobsters. series yep i love your stairs i have i don't remember uh -huh. the stairs before this is tell us about this this one is more like super personal it's just kind of like the idea of being homesick but it that uh -huh. home doesn't really exist anymore like you're homesick for a place that's no longer mm. um, beautiful beautiful yeah. concepting beautiful concepting that's great do we have all these no i am so you i owe you so many pieces yes, you do young like, lady yes scale. you do i have it on my list of to do's on my planner mm -hmm. Like, you hear that, Susan and Kim? Bugger for these. These are amazing. And I'd love to get you a full page editorial piece with this look. It's amazing. Thank you. Oh. The end. <laughs> Just thank you. The end. That closes it. We have a few questions. We have quite a few. Let's see. Um, um, 
Nita says, when did you know you were wired creatively? <laughs> That's a good wow. question. Um, well, I guess, I guess when you're a kid, you don't really, you don't say like, oh, like, I don't know. I guess I just started, my mom was a really good, oh, there you are. My mom was an incredible artist and my dad is a musician and carpenter. And, um, but my mom was very mentally ill. Like, um, so she didn't really make a career out of it and she couldn't really get any momentum. And she was also like a parent of two kids and a single, single parent. So I think, you know, I saw a lot of, I watched her make a lot of art and she was always very generous, like letting me watch her and try some materials. And, um, but we didn't do a whole lot of art making together. We would bake a lot together, but we would always like, we would make dioramas and I would play with clay and I just loved it. And mm. I think when, when, when crap hit the fan in my home, I think I just, it was like a way for me to escape. And so I didn't, I didn't necessarily feel like I was wired to be an artist, but I did feel like when I was in high school and like this pressure of like, oh, what are you going to do? And I was like, well, I'm going to be an artist. Like, I didn't think about it. I didn't, I didn't picture myself. I didn't want to do anything else, but I had no idea what that really looked like. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you don't know. It's crazy. I mean, you just, high school is a really crazy time in a person's life and you don't it's so much anticipation there's so much unknown you're still a kid but you're almost you're on your way to being an adult yeah. and so I didn't <clears throat> I just and I didn't even take a typing class because I was like I'm an artist I don't I'm not gonna need to <laughs> know how to type <laughs> like that's literally how naive I was but I wasn't very artistically the funny thing is I wasn't super artistically active in high school oh. I got distracted oh. by like very negative out you know influences and chaos in my home and I didn't really make I was I had an art class and I love my art teacher and I did make art but I wasn't like obsessed with art in high school mm. um it was like you know something I knew I could look forward to but mm -hmm. but then I, you know I went to school and I didn't like it. I didn't want to be a fine art major. I didn't like the graphic design program. And then I like dropped out. Wow. Wow. Dropped out of, of school. Yeah. And then I got married and had a baby. <laughs> and then I was like, whoa, like, you know, made my way back to a path that I belonged on, you know, as a mom. Well, so. I, you know, I, I would love to see you No, this is your agent speaking. I'd love to see you write, do a, a memoir that's very visual with all, what a life you've lived, you know, I'd love to see the, you draw like a visual memoir with words too. Oh, what do you wow. think? I would never, never thought about that before. Well, that would be intense. We could, we could talk could, about it. When the time is right, you know, a memoir needs to be when the time is right. We, um, I have a question here by Deborah Steyer. She writes, is there a good way to speak politically with your art? Lilla, do art directors want to see politics in a portfolio or social media? Um, I, well, I'll start with that, Sarah, and then I, I, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, I find our community of art directors and editors tends to be on the progressive side, which For is sure. great and human humanity side and kindness. Um, and I think that there is definitely a place, but more importantly, it's an important thing to do. Now, how you do it, for example, Sarah has been doing diverse people for ages, ages. It's not a new thing that she just did. And, and, and that was pushing the envelope. Um, there are ways, what is political for you? How do you do it? It's very personal how you want to do it, how much you want to do. You yeah. will get political work if you do it. You will get particularly editorial work, meaning magazines, online, uh, book work. There is a definite call for it. It's, you know, if it's authentic, it's great for your career. Um, but, you know, and I think that uh, when 
I, uh, what do you think, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> I agree with everything you said. I think I, a, a, a metaphor that I've used before, but it's super corny, but I feel like it really helps illustrate like, you know, <clears throat> I think it's important if you're going to freelance that you have to make sure it's the path like that you want to go on because you're the one driving the ship. Um, and if you say you do a piece of art and you were just experimenting and it came out really good, but it wasn't something you wanted to do further, like say you, you decide you want to play in the political art realm. You mm -hmm. post something and it like goes viral and art directors see it and you're struggling, you're working at a coffee shop, you want to go full time as an artist, this is an opportunity, art directors come at you, they're paying you, paying you, paying you. And then you're like, whoa, I am not really that political of a person and this is getting too intense for me, but now I have all these jobs and those jobs are going to be seen by the public, which is going to get more jobs and you, these are the bricks, you chose a brick and then more bricks came and now you have this house and it's gorgeous, but it's not bringing you joy. And, <laughs> and now you're like, I want to burn my house down because you're not happy. It's like, you might as well just work for someone else making art. If you don't dig in and do the work and figure out who you are and what kind of work you want to make, because if you do it well, they're going to, people are going to see it eventually. And they're want they're going to want to make you do it or ugh, I'm getting tongue tied. They're, this is like this is like a passionate thing. Like this is like a trigger for me because it's so scary branching off on your own, and you have to be really careful. And you know, I was in this position, and I, you, it can easily go off the rails. And I, I'm grateful to you, Lilla, and the studio ladies because I feel like I was lucky enough to be paired with an agent that reflected my values and and the kind of artwork I want to make and the right recipe. Like not all political, not all this, not all that, but like a good mix. Um, so anyway, that's just my bit on like, just be careful um, what you do because you might do it too well. And if it's not something you want to do more of, just be careful. You might have to say no to kind of like stop that momentum and reposition yourself on, on your track. Because it's too political or not political enough? just whatever, whatever kind of art you're wanting to make and bolster your career on. You know what I mean? It's like, if you want to go more political and you're not getting enough political work, do some unpaid, just personal work, put it out there that's political. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you do a piece and I'm not saying like every piece you have to be careful, but if you put something out there and it might not be the path you want to continue on, mm -hmm. be prepared to say no to a job, even if you need the money, you might, you can say yes and get paid for a couple, but then you're going to have to eventually make a decision, I guess is what okay. I'm saying. Does that make sense? Yeah. You never have to, if there's something you could, you, you get to have boundaries. Erica Root says, I feel like Sarah makes a statement by promoting inclusivity rather than shaming the side she doesn't agree with. That's such a powerful and positive stance to take. Thank you, Erica Root. Aww, who I thanks, Erica. Isn't that beautiful? I really appreciate that. Yeah. And, and you know, she's putting out positivity. Sarah's putting out positivity. And I think that's key. You can be political and positive. Okay. Um, I think we're going to um, do the raffle. How about that? So... Here is how we do the raffle to win this fabulous little zipper pouch by Sarah for Blue Q. Is that a flower on one of your nails? Yes. That's I was, so cute. Did you paint that? They're press on. Oh. Yes. I'm not going to the manicurist. <laughs> they're press on. I love it. I sit at the counter and do my That's awesome. On. I want to stay on very well. No, I'm not an affiliate for the these nails. Um, <laughs> so here's how we do the raffle. I'm going to say a category and you then guess in the chat, not Q and A in the chat, you will guess, you can guess as many times as you want, as often as you like. And Kim, who's behind the scenes is going to look for the first answer 
the correct an first correct answer she sees. Now, the, the answers come in so fast and furious that she may not, you might have been first, but um, Kim is doing her very best to try to find the first, but if she doesn't, it's the one she sees, the correct answer she sees first. And well, then, you know, it's exciting. And then- yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go this excited? time. Last time I had no idea what to expect. Now um, I'm poised. Oh, good. You all set? <laughs> okay. So um, did I say everything right, Kim? Is that yeah. everything right? Okay. I and think. then you'll send us your email and address and we'll, we'll send you the little gift. So the category is an animal, an animal. Type in the chat, an animal. How did people already do oh, that? Already? Oh my God, this is insane. Oh, somebody just did it. Oh, somebody okay, did it. good. I'm glad. Stop, everyone. I'm glad you saw it because I didn't. Uh, yes, Kim Sharp Leba. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Was there someone before that? Um, there, there was two mentions, but one. Oh, was actually, yeah, I'm scrolling back. There was someone before yeah. that. Sorry, Sarah Rose said that horse was, was the horse was the correct answer. Um, Yay. Which you probably could have guessed from Sarah's. Um, Sarah's artwork. I love the <laughs> orangutan, guinea pig, sloth, unicorn, lemur, raccoon. So <laughs> I love Sarah, Sarah Rose. If you could email me, my email is kim, K I M, at lillarogers.com and send me your address and we'll send out the giveaway. Congratulations. Yay. Oh, this was such a pick me up. This was so wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today and listening. Is that a car? And oh, listening. yeah. It's loud here. Sorry. Uh, and thank you for joining us and listening to magical beautiful soul sarah walsh oh gosh. Um, and you know what you could go to you could go to amazon and um, type in sarah walsh and i bet a lot of her products will show up maybe on barnes and noble too or on um indie bound books also go to we have like a few minutes or are we like done no, we can, if you have something, I just want to, from uh, your Etsy shop is Tiger Sheep. What is it again? Tiger, Tiger Sheep Friends, yeah. Tiger Sheep Friends is your Etsy yeah. shop. Why, did you want to say something? Oh, well, speaking of books, like, this is very... Oh, I'm uh, supposed to ask you what book or movie you're reading. I always forget. Uh, oh, what I'm reading? Um, I, just, I just read Circe um, by Madeline Miller. Incredible. Really? Incredible. Yeah, it's so good. Thank chills. Good. It's good. Um, but I wanted to announce uh, a book that I've been working on for a long time um, that it nearly killed me. <laughs> but I'm not dead. Well, and not, so. uh, but it was my first book uh, of a reoccurring character, mm -hmm. and I had to sort of compete to get it. Um, it was like the spring of 2018. And um, I was fortunate enough to re-illustrate uh, Roll Dolls Matilda. And it is available um, on Amazon for pre-order. We haven't done a cover reveal or anything like that yet, but I have like posted a little bit of sneak peeks on my Instagram. Um, I'm working with the PR team. It's through Penguin Young Readers. Um, and it's the follow-up to the Alice in Wonderland that uh, uh, Anna Bond's Rifle Paper did. And so they wanted to do a new one. And so they chose Matilda. And it was a huge, huge learning experience. And I am so grateful. Uh, Lindsay Andrews, the art director, and she's incredible. And um, Deborah Kaplan. Can you give us the title again? Kim, Matilda. Uh, Matilda. It, I, and I'm, <laughs> it was a lot of pressure. No one else has ever illustrated his books, but um, Quentin Blake, this is my copy that I read 50 times with notes to reimagine and re, you know, just kind of re-envision the book. Um, it's thank for, you. It's available for pre-sale, for pre right? Yep, it's available for pre-order. It's coming out October 13th. Um, 
So I, again, just so excited. And this is just like the very beginning of announcing. I haven't announced this at all anywhere. I've just done sneak peeks. So I wanted to do it with you, Lilla. Um, so, so yeah. That's but. very, very exciting. Very exciting. And I remember when, as you said, you needed to, uh, well, you needed to, to do a piece paid of course it wasn't spec work you were paid to do a piece um and a few other illustrators i think were in the running maybe yeah but they went through like seven illustrators and didn't get anywhere and they had to do a whole other round and i have to be honest with you i know this is maybe not the thing to do but i gotta be me um when i was chosen and i saw one of the illustrators they ended up posting some of their their uh spec work on Instagram like months and months later and I was like oh my god are you sure you got the right person <laughs> you know because there's so much talent out there and but I think they wanted they just the more I was on the project and, and the more I talked to the PR team actually and Lindsay was such a great cheerleader and she explained like this is why they chose you and you know mm -hmm. it, it made sense and you have to believe in yourself you have to remember like hey they picked me I have to do this job and I have to you know if they're believing in me I need to believe in myself and I, I was only doubting things because it was such a there's over 130 illustrations full spreads pages half pages spots cover mm -hmm. back uh end papers just so much stuff and Again, it was my first job where I was doing a reoccurring character, also characters. It was like being a director of a play, you have to design the stage, you have to design the characters, you have to design them multiple ways, multiple uh, angles, make sure you know who they are. Um, you have to be consistent with outfits. And I love fashion, so I wasn't going to put them in the same outfit every time. So mm -hmm. I had to make sure that it was consistent with each scene for that day or whatever. Um, there was just so much that goes into it and it just gave me a whole new respect for, you know, illustrators that focus on that kind of storytelling. Yeah. You so, know, I was so nervous and excited and hopeful when you did the piece, the test piece for them. I really, really wanted you to get it. And we were so excited when you did. It was, it was very exciting. We it's get very still I love Roald Dahl. He's one of my favorite storytellers and it was a dream job for sure. And, but it was, it was painful at times. I'll be honest with you because it, there was a huge, huge learning curve and I really appreciate uh, all the patience that, you know, I was given. Um, mm -hmm. But I, you know, I, I feel good about what I did and I feel proud and uh, I hope everyone likes it. <laughs> You know what I want to say, and I'm sure our, our viewers will, will agree, but one of the things I love about Sarah and have always loved is her vulnerability, her comfort being vulnerable and honest. She's just so, she's, that takes so much guts to be, to put that in your, in what you said. Am I going to make you cry? No, I just, no, I, sometimes, I think it's, are. it's, I think I do it too soon with people and later I'm like god what no you no it's wonderful you know? you know and and it's 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 a good influence on me because you know in a professional situation and publicly you I'm guarded I'm guarded and I love how you yeah I, I should be more guarded. no you shouldn't no no I love that you're you're so real and authentic and, and vulnerable. It's beautiful. Well, thanks. Uh, Riley says, people buy your honesty. Thank you, Riley. So good to see you. And <laughs> looking forward to talking to you tomorrow. That's great. Thanks. Well, thank you, everyone. For, uh, for anything yeah. else to say? Any new book reveals? No, we got it all. I'm sure I'll think of something when we hang up, but I, I can always put it on our Instagram. Yeah. Something I wanted to share, Matilda, was the thing I didn't want to forget. I wish I had the vis a visual to share, but I don't have. Do you, uh, do you want me to, let me, let me go to, um, put it on, uh, let me get it one sec and I can share. I, I have the BLAD at home and I don't even, I need to look up what BLAD actually stands for. But I know. Me, I should. One sec, Sarah, whoops. 
Mm-hmm. I forgot to turn the air conditioning on before this started. Oh, wow. Big. There's so much. So if you Google Sarah Walsh, by the way, on Amazon, there's a freaking million um, things. So let me, I can screen share this. Oh, look at me being so tech. <laughs> um, boom, share. Okay, there here we are. Look at this. I wish I had something. Yeah, it's kind of, I don't know why it's so low res what they do on Amazon. Does it look low res for you? Uh, for me. I, you know, it might be my iPad screen because I have a film over it to give it texture for when I'm drawing. So mm-hmm. it could be that. Um, but yeah. Yay. Oh, that's I, wonderful. I also just want to say, actually, I do have something to say now that this visual is here. I really pushed for Matilda being a girl of color and we really tried hard in the doll estate because it's actually written in the descriptions of the book that she's pale and all this stuff. They just didn't Mm. feel comfortable doing that. It would be interesting if we were to start this project now, if they might about it differently. I know they, they're not going to rewrite a passed away author's, you Mm. know, cherished story, but Mm. I just want people to know that I really pushed for it. And there was a part of me, I was like, should I take this? Because this is an opportunity for representation. And in the end, I just, I decided to take the job because I, it was, it was a huge opportunity for me to learn. And, um, I've never kind of built him and I love him. And so I thought, well, maybe this will be good practice for when I can do a book that I can write or, you know, that I can choose what the character looks like. Um, Again, I had never done a book like this before. Um, In your memoir. Yeah, my memoir. Um, So anyway, this is the cover. Um, If there's going to be all the stars are like a, a holographic foil um, to kind of reflect Matilda's magic. Um, that was a big thing too for the re-envisioning. I realized the prior version, um, Quentin Blake's didn't, they, there really wasn't any uh, reference to her magic in the, in, in his version. Um, and that might have been the way, you know, they wanted it, but I felt and that was maybe one of the reasons why they chose me is to really play up the the magic of of her and visually show that. Um, so anyway, that's great. Well, thank you. So thank we've covered you so much. everything, and it was such a pleasure. And I knew it would be such an uplift talking to you. And oh, up on this rainy day in this crazy time, and what a ray of sunshine you are to all of us. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you, everybody, for joining yeah. us, commenting, and being awesome. And really appreciate it. We will see you next week uh, with Anka Rega from Berlin. My Anka. artist will be chatting with her, so that will be wonderful. Thank you again, everybody. It was a real pleasure, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Uh, should I hang up?